chalking up. Chalk it up. Never use straps. Never been a big fan. Raw. Huh? Any I never use straps. In, never use straps. I just didn't want to get used to it. Um, I didn't want to just lift with straps like heavy deads and then get to composition and be like, where are my straps? Did like any like overweight stuff with straps? I should have done, but I think I just had it in my mind that I didn't want to get used to it, so I just trained with chalk. But um, when I got to composition, I was really surprised about how my like the um, restrictions they had. They were like, they had this have to be approved and this have to be approved. And they looked at my knee sleeves and they were like, are they IPF approved? And I was like, you tell me. I literally got these off Amazon. They were like seven pound. What's the question? They got to a CrossFit gym and realised everyone's chalk. Oh yeah, literally. I turned up in knee sleeves and a belt, and they were like, "You lived in a belt? It's not even 200 kilos yet." <laughs> just clouds of chalk everywhere, and just people. Doing a walk out. Yeah. Where's the chalk? Where's the chalk? <laughs> these are bicep curls, dude. <laughs> so, um, what is your uh, training background? My training background, well, I started off at um, college and just like the, the college gym, just started lifting weights when I was doing my diploma. Um, didn't really have a direction from a young age, I just kind of did what I saw on Instagram or what I was learning in my um, qualification. It was, I, I really started looking into my programming and stuff when I started at Pure Gym. That's when I realized it was important to actually follow a program. Got into CrossFit, from CrossFit, found out that I was pretty strong, so I got into powerlifting. Uh, I was power, competitive powerlifting for about 18 months, and then since then, reined it back on the training and just focused on actually coaching and, and getting my work life sorted. So that's pretty much been my background from now. From so when you first started doing this stuff in the college gym, like, what, what kind of things did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Stuff, like body stuff, or was it kind of CrossFit related? No, it was, um, it was actually, I showed traits of enjoying powerlifting from, from young at college, like about 16. I was deadlifting, squatting, not well, but I showed interest in that side of training first. So I wasn't interested in jumping on the treadmill or the machines. I was like, I wanted to lift the bar, I wanted to squat the bar. That's where I found my, most confidence, um, just working with a barbell. Um, it did develop into kind of after CrossFit and powerlifting, it did develop into about six months of bodybuilding. But um, I realized that that lifestyle in terms of the dieting and the constant training and the tracking wasn't really for me at this age. Um, it could potentially be in the future. But I just like to see the numbers on the bar go up, feeling stronger and still looking pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's been a bit up and down to be honest, like always changing or it has consistently been changing for about four years. But I kind of settle into something for, for a, over a year and then I'll, I'll kind of make a shift. So I'm trying at the moment, I'm trying to find what avenue I'm wanting to go down from now. It took a long time to get used to that. I spent the first five months of CrossFit bruised from the knee to here, like spotty bruises. And my mum used to say, oh, that looks awful. I was like, because I'm not making contact in the right place. I look back at old videos of me and I'm literally getting the bar to here and going, boing. But now if I get it right here, nothing, yeah. Um, it's when they realized that my conditioning was terrible. Like I couldn't keep up in the conditioning classes whatsoever. But they're like, your lifting's decent. So that's when they're like, have you tried power lifting? And, um, that's when I was like, no, I haven't. So I thought, well, I'll try that. And that's when I became, started my first prep for a competition. It's a lot more slow paced than that. <laughs> Do you enjoy the part of it? Although it's a bit tricky, would you actually enjoy doing it? I think I want to enjoy it more. Like I see our members doing so well in the 35 and 50s and I'm jealous like the buzz they get and stuff. I'm like, oh, I really want to be able to do that. So I need to like change my mindset around it and not think cardio is just there for people who want to be good at cardio. Like it's actually the health benefits are so good. And I'm like, just need to get my head into the game with that a bit more. What? So you obviously said earlier about getting into the, the college gym. But what was it about it that kind of got you into the gym in the first place? What started the whole thing off? Oh, good question. I was always really sporty as a kid. Like every day after school, I had something. Rounders, tennis, football, netball, rugby. 
my mum couldn't keep me out of sport. But going into college, I realised I didn't want to pursue a competitive sport. I still studied sports science, but I was like, I didn't want to go into competitive sports. And naturally in college, we learned more about the muscles and training systems. I was like, oh, this actually could be something like it's still active, but I don't have to be like in a team competitively. And um, then I realised this is something I want to teach. So I thought if I'm going to teach it, I need to know the most about it. So when I got into college, I was like the first time I stepped into a gym. <laughs> I was just a little 16 year old, just didn't really know what I was looking at. Um, and so I guess it was just that background in sports growing up, always having an interest in exercise and fitness. And that's what led me naturally into this side of things, I guess. So what, what keeps you doing it now? <sighs> that's a deep question. I guess I don't see myself doing anything else. And the reward I get from seeing people progress and seeing other people experience the same um, sense of achievement that I got or I get when I train, seeing that and knowing I've helped someone else feel good about themselves, feel more confident, um, and in some cases improve their health to a point where you know they can do stuff again. Like if someone's like, oh, I couldn't run around with my kids two months ago, but now I can keep up with them. Like just something like that, it's like, and if I've been a, even a small part in helping that, it's like, yeah, like the, the, the feeling after that, after hearing that is just, you can't really explain it. So that kind of led you into the path of coaching and also kind of inspires you to make sure that you're in the gym every day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Going from, you know, knowing I can help others and setting a bit of an example or making sure I'm keeping on track of myself because I want to be able to do stuff when I'm older and, and I want to be able to keep my body in a decent condition as the years go on. So it's like starting at a young age, it's like something I want to pursue and help others pursue as well. Do you think yes. that your training will, kind of will change eventually from the powerlifting stuff? Like you said about longevity, do you think what your training week looks like, what your training sessions look like, do you think they'll change? Yeah. it's it, it, my training has, it does change and I don't, I think it'd be ignorant for me to say it will never change and I'll be powerlifting in 20 years time. You know, I think I've got the body and the ability to do it now, you know, and then as the future comes, uh, life changes, you know, you're looking at uh, starting a family and stuff. That's, I don't know if I'll be able to powerlift when I'm post-pregnancy or, you know, something like that in the future. So it's like, um, it will change. I want to stay, however, in the realm of strength training, just because it's something I'm so passionate about. But you know, stuff changes and um, yeah, but I do, it for now and for the foreseeable, staying in some kind of like strength avenue is like definitely where I see myself. Yeah, strip the big weights off. So obviously, as like you said, strength training is going to be the focus of the near future. Yes. Foreseeable. Yes. Is, what's the plan for 2023? Ooh, good question. So I'm going to say this on camera because that keeps me accountable with everyone. <laughs> um, Adelston qualifiers um, powerlifting in September. So going for that, um, I need to have a direction to be honest and I need to um, kind of sort my act out in terms of training and just have a goal. Um, it's definitely sticking with strength but with that prep comes a whole lot of other stuff so it won't just be prep in terms of gradually building up the mat. It will be a case of by summer cutting the kilos. Was the last time that you actually competed? Oh, um, July 2020. So it's been well over a year, a year and a half. What were your lifts at Not brilliant. I've lifted more since. So my deadlift sat 140, yeah. which could have been way better, but I was going very conservative because it's my first comp. Um, my bench was just shy of 60 and my squat was, I think, just over 110. Nice. So, I mean, decent, but my goal for that specific competition was just to get nine good lifts. I wasn't too bothered about where I placed. I just wanted to get nine, uh, or um, three white lights, so three OKs from all the judges for all of my lifts, all my three attempts on each lift. So I was like, I'm going there to just perfect technique, perfect my cues, make sure everything is looking good rather than pushing the weight. Because I look at my max deadlift and it flew. And I was like, I could have chucked 10 kilos on that and it would have been fine. But that's not what I was going for. I was going to like get 
nice lifts and nice comments from the judges, which is essentially what I got in the end. And you've got some targets in place for the next one. Oh yeah, 155 dead at least, and 15 kilos added on to one for that. That's doable. I mean, you know, 155, 160 is definitely in reach. Squat wise, I'm maybe 120, and then bench, I've always gotten stuck on just because it's been my weakest one. So I'm, I'm hoping for a 60 or 65, which again is reachable. It's just with competition bench, the ruling is so strict. You know, pausing at the bottom. And naturally being female, upper body strength is a little bit harder to get for me anyway. What other, as in mental health side, what other struggles have you had to kind of fit this labor related wise? Have you been yourself or um, professionally, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think I've been through quite a lot of different phases. I went through a phase of being quite overweight, especially as a, uh, a younger adult. Um, I was heavier than I should be. I um, was very self-conscious. I remember like, it being my prom and I look back at pictures of my prom and I was like, I just wasn't looking after myself. Now, I might have only been about 16, 17 or whatever, but still at that age I should have been. I knew about diet and stuff. I've been at the other end of the spectrum where I've actually been fairly slim and a bit too slim, where I didn't have any muscle mass. So when I got into lockdown, I stopped eating as much and I was running all the time and I wasn't taking care of myself in the other aspect of giving myself enough fuel to lift weights. And I was just doing cardio because I didn't have any equipment in lockdown. So I've been at both, end of the both ends of the spectrum. Right now, a big struggle is like my appearance in terms of feeling a bit heavier or understanding why I'm heavier. It's because I'm in, trying to lift heavier and I know that I need to be a certain weight in order to lift weights that I want to and gain the muscle mass that I want to. But I think struggling men mentally it is comparisons and feeling as a, a female anyway. Um, I'm, I'm too skinny or I was too big or I was too muscular or I didn't have enough muscle and it just flip flops back and forth. So that's why I'm a big advocate of just like everyone looks amazing for, if, you know, for how, how they look. Everyone, everyone's beautiful. You know, you get loads of different shapes and sizes and it's just about respecting the size that you are. If you want to change it, that's fine, but don't let it limit you to what you can do, where you can go, what you can wear. Um, and don't let any size stop you from going to the gym either, training. Yeah. So what's um, a bit of a background on the work side, the coaching side? Where did that all start? Do you want to be in your own business for a while, right? Yeah, so I started my business during lockdown 2020, worst time to start a business, but um, it did build up a good amount of resilience in terms of me personally starting something, no clients, very little experience, um, and picking the hardest time to go on my own and start. Um, so when lockdown eased, I decided to go to a gym, um, and then I did, I left the gym because my business was taking off really well, and I focused on that for a while. Then I wanted a bit more stability in my training and my coaching, so I joined another gym, and then I moved to Caterham, and I didn't want to commute anymore. And um, during that journey, I, I can't say how much I've learned. Um, how you start as a coach is by no means how you might finish your career. You, um, you learn so much, and what I've had to learn, and this is quite personal, I've had to learn humility to take tips and to take advice and education from other coaches. It is something that you can have a bit of an ego about, be like, oh, you know, this is the way I do it, so. But actually taking a step back, I think it comes with a bit of maturity as well. You know, there's you know, so much to learn, especially from more experienced coaches, especially here at T2, there's so much experience in such a small team. And it's, um, it's lovely to, to have a new attitude of, no, I want to learn from you guys, rather than being hard-headed and being like, no, I know what I'm doing. And now I'm here at T2 Fit, and I have to admit, it's probably, the best coaching job I've ever had in the four years I've been a coach. The best coaching job. Um, everyone is so supportive of each other. Um, best coaching team I've ever worked with, by far. Um, and being a younger one, I was a bit worried at first, I'll be quite honest. I was worried I was quite a lot younger than the other coaches, but by no means have I ever felt like they look down to me or like that I'm any less experienced. I just, they, they respect me. And um, it's just such a nice, even playing field and 
everyone's always just there to help each other and that's what I love the most. And it comes from a place of, of care and wanting us to do the best job possible rather than I'm going to boast about how much I know, kind of thing. And what's the plan of coaching wise moving forward, like a year, two years, mm. like, where, where do you kind of see yourself going, what's the, what's the end goal of coaching? Yeah, wise? well I'd love to just carry on learning um, and I'd, I'd love to stick and be with T2 as they grow because we've like talking to Luke and learning about T2, how much it has grown and what T2 has managed to provide and the amount of people they've managed to help in, in a short space of time it's been opened. Like you then take a step back from that and think about where it could be in the year's time. Have you got anyone in particular that kind of really drives you or that you look up to? Um, i definitely say my mum. She had a health scare um, in 2021. 20, she had, um, she, she had um, symptoms of um, dizziness, which ended up being mini seizures, and it um, turned out she had a brain tumour. Um, they did the x-ray, and it was like the same size as her eyeball <laughs> growing in her head, and um, that was a big scare, because I was 20 at the time, and the idea of just like losing my mum wasn't even something I'd consider, but we as a family were very fortunate that it was not growing anymore and they could remove it and um, she's been clear ever since but since she's been clear all she's done is get into this gym and um, get her health back to where it, it, it was before and, and even get more get fitter and stronger so to have that kind of health scare and then your first thing to do when you is come back in your life and, and try and improve your health again I think that's a massive inspiration and um, whenever I'm in here she's training I'm always really proud of her so yeah massive inspo there I would say. Do you really enjoy being able to take my own to <laughs> I think I enjoy it, I don't think she likes being told what to do by me especially if I'm like, she takes everything as a criticism, I'll be like you need to just drive that me for, don't, I'm doing my best, <laughs> I'm like I'm trying to help.